It's very easy to measure the composition of our current atmosphere just using quite simple chemical tests. And what we find is that today there is about 80% oxygen in the atmosphere, roughly 19, 20% of nitrogen, and about 1% of other gases. This includes noble gases, things like argon. It also includes carbon dioxide, which is only a very, very small amount in our atmosphere now. However, the atmosphere has not always been like that. When the Earth was first formed, it was incredibly hot. It was far too hot for um, for there to be liquid water on Earth. It would just have boiled straight away. Um, and the Earth was co covered with big volcanoes. And these volcanoes were constantly erupting and spewing out lots and lots of gases. They did spew out quite a lot of gases, but the main ones that they were giving out were carbon dioxide and water vapour. Remember, it was far too hot for the water vapour to condense and form liquid water, so it just stayed in the atmosphere. Over the next billion years or so, the Earth started to cool down. So what happened is our Earth became a lot, um, Earth became a lot cooler, and as it got under 100 degrees C, the water vapour began to condense, and it formed seas and oceans on the Earth's surface. So it would have rained for literally millions and millions of years without stopping and formed, and the uh, water vapour would have turned into liquid water. As liquid water started to form, the carbon dioxide that was in the atmosphere was able to start dissolving into these seas. Just like you can dissolve carbon dioxide into water to give you sparkling water or a fizzy drink, carbon dioxide started to dissolve in the seas and oceans. And that was it, at least for the time being. Nothing else can really happen. We've got carbon dioxide dissolved, or some carbon dioxide dissolved in that water, but nothing else can really happen. So the next thing that started to change the atmosphere was kind of a miracle. No one really understands quite how it works. There are theories about it, which I'm going to talk about later on. Um, which is high tier only, but for some unknown reason, life started. And the first life was very, very, very simple. It was just what we call cyanobacteria, very, very simple microorganisms, but they were able to pho uh, photosynthesize. So they could produce their own food by photosynthesis, and what that did is it turned carbon dioxide into oxygen. So suddenly we've got a process which can reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere still and can increase the amount of oxygen. So this went on for millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of billions of years until eventually there was enough oxygen in the atmosphere for animals to evolve. So eventually we got uh, seas and oceans containing some dissolved carbon dioxide still which started to have little um, shellfish that's meant to be a shell and little fishes and things in them and they were able to turn the carbon dioxide which was dissolved in the seawater they were able to turn that into shells and skeletons of marine organisms so co2 is turned into shells and skeletons As these marine organisms died, they're going to go to the bottom of the sea, and over millions and millions and millions of years, they will build up, they will get covered by other sediments, other um, um, shellfish, other bits of rock and grain, etc, 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 and eventually, the pressure was enough to turn the carbonates inside these, um, inside these fish and shellfish into carbonate rocks, such as limestone. Which is calcium carbonate. So there's actually three different methods which have helped to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Firstly, it dissolved into the seas and oceans. Secondly, plants started to take it in during photosynthesis. Um, and thirdly, it got turned into shells and skeletons and marine organisms, and it also got turned into carbonate rocks. So there's loads to talk about if you get a question on that. Right, so this carried on for millions and millions and millions of years, and eventually we got the um, we got the atmosphere as how it is today, which is which is here. Um, humans 
can have an impact on this too though. So humans do all sorts of processes. Um, we burn fuels. Which is going to increase carbon dioxide levels. We farm. So cattle farming and making things like rice fields. Will increase greenhouse gases, for example, carbon dioxide, but also things like methane, CH4, which is also a greenhouse gas. In addition, humans do things like deforestation for a variety of reasons, for example, to um, make room to grow biofuels, and that will reduce the amount of photosynthesis, which will mean that less carbon dioxide is being absorbed into the plants and trees, therefore it will increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere again. Okay, for higher tier, we need to um, be able to discuss, think about, so, or at least one of the theories about how life started. So, um, the one theory we need to know about was called the Miller-Urey experiment. And what Miller and Urey did is they took a big, uh, a big jar and flask like this, and they put in various gases. They put in things like ammonia, methane, um, and other gases, water as well, and they basically uh, put a, a electric uh, field through this. So they effectively put lightning through this, uh, through their mixture of gases for a prolonged period of time. And what they actually found after they had done this is that they had produced amino acids. From your biology, you should know that amino acids um, are turned into proteins, they're used to make DNA. So they thought this is one possible way that life could have started, that, that lightning um, could have formed amino acids from simple starting materials and that could be how life started. There's arguments for and against that. One uh, one against or a few against it is that they basically selected gases containing the elements that uh, make up amino acids. So they knew amino acids with nitrogen, hydrogen and carbon, oxygen in them. So they basically cheated and actually there's very little evidence to say that these gases were in the early atmosphere. Um, also it's unlikely that the Earth's atmosphere constantly had lightning for you know thousands and thousands of years. Um, however, one thing for it is that it did produce the uh, some of the compounds which are uh, the origin of life. So, it's in, it's just in some respects, it is it's quite uh, good evidence, but it does not prove how life started. This one is called the Miller-Urey experiment. GP. Um, so the last thing you need to know on height, which is not a foundation, is just about how we can separate air. Um, just like crude oil, air is a mixture of different uh, chemicals, um, and in a similar way it can be separated by fractional distillation. So just like for crude oil, we're going to be putting this time air in here, and we're going to be seeing what we get out. So this needs to be liquefied air, so it needs to be incredibly cold. Um, before you do that, you have to remove the water from it because the water would freeze and form ice, which would ruin the um, ruin the uh, experiment. So depending on the uh, boiling point of the gases, uh, you'll get them rising up and condensing. You don't need to know anything about the order of them, but you're going to get things like oxygen out, nitrogen. You're going to get gases like argon, um, which should probably be at the top, actually, but never mind. So you're going to be able to separate the gases out from air, and this is just fractional distillation, just as it's like crude oil.